Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to talk about uh, some stuff that is much requested on this channel. Uh, probably the most frequently asked thing we get is, where was everyone in the gun turret? So, just off the bat, the gun turret is not just the structure you see on deck. It is a five or six story rotating structure that comes all the way down into the ship. We are below water right now, and uh, as you can see by this crack in the deck here, it's rotating all the way down to this space. So, uh, I've always been told that there are 80 sailors in the turret that's fully rated for. We went to the manuals and we printed out the diagrams that show the positions of where everyone are, and there's only 74 positions listed on here. Uh, so, we're starting at the lowest level, the powder flats, which I think is where the missing people come from. The diagram shows that there should be 13 sailors at this level, not counting the folks in the magazine on the other side of the watertight door there. So, where did everybody stand, and why do I think this is where the, the extra uh, sailors come in? We'll get to that in a second, but first, the reason why the number fluctuates is because you can do this with far less than the rated number of people. Uh, we know, for example, in the 1980s that the, the ship is not operating under the full crew that you would have had in World War II, so they're not throwing 70 or 80 guys in each turret. Uh, we, we know this for a fact because of the number of deaths related to the Iowa turret explosion. There are 47 sailors in there. That's everybody in the complete turret um, passes away when the turret explodes. So we know exactly how many men were in there for that shoot in 1989. So it, it's showing like a real documented case of something that we've been told a lot, that, that yeah, we're, not, we're not doing this with the full number of sailors. And we'll talk about some of the places where you can cut sailors later on as well. So the 13 sailors that are supposed to be in this space you have, first of all, a petty officer in charge, standing, in the diagram at least, right where I am. And that guy is uh, the senior person in here, he's the odd number, and he's the, the, the like extra hands. He's telling everybody what to do, and then if there's an issue, he's the guy who can jump in. Otherwise, each of the three barrels that's fed from this space has four sailors assigned to it. So, each of the three barrels, left, right, and center, has three powder men assigned to it. These are the guys who are passing the powder bags from the magazines on this side of the bulkhead into the turret on this side of the bulkhead. They're using these flash-proof roller doors to do it. Uh, they are left, right, and center, first, second, and third powder men. So, I am currently in the position of the the third powder man right. So, what I'm doing here, I'm getting this bell rung from the magazine, and they're saying that they have a powder bag that's ready to go. That's this guy right here. So we are assuming the powder's in this side, they've put it in, they don't have a handle like this on their side, so they ring it to let me know they're ready. I bring the powder over, and now I'm ready to pass it to the other side. I don't have a handle for their side, so I've got to ring them, and then they'll turn it. So that's the job of the third powder man, and the guy who's doing this job on the other side of the bulkhead is the second powder man. So the second powder man brings the bag out here. He's just standing here doing the roller door, and that brings us to the first powder man. That's the guy who has to pick up the 110 pound bag, bring it over here, and then push it into the elevator. So, each barrel has three of these guys. However, you'll notice that there are actually six of these powder doors in here. For turret two, that's three each port and starboard. So there is room 
for essentially twice the size of the crew down here to really be passing powder if you need it. So that's why I suspect that uh, to go from the 74 people rated in the book to the 80 people that's often said, you can throw more bodies in here to be moving. 110 pound powder bags. Like th this isn't easy. In theory, the guns have a rate of fire of one round every 30 seconds. In actuality, in naval combat, it's closer to one round every minute or so. But that's still, because you've got to move six powder bags per barrel every minute. So each crew of three is moving six bags a minute in a, in a naval gunfight. But only one of those three guys is moving the bags. The other two are just moving these roller doors. So I'm, I'm guessing that's where the extra folks were. But also, if you're just doing a shore bombardment where you might be dropping one round, seeing where it landed, doing an adjustment, dropping another one, um, it, it's not so intense as a naval battle, then you don't need all of these people around. And I suspect that's why by the 80s, as you switched from an all drafty uh, to an all volunteer crew, you don't have as many people, uh, that, that they start to cut some of these redundant positions. So that brings us to the final position uh, down here. You've got three guys that are the powder door operators. Let me show you where they go. You've got your powder door operators left, right, and center. We're in the center powder door area. And, and the beautiful thing about the Navy is sailors are not creative when it comes to naming things. What do you think these guys do? They operate the doors to the powder elevators. When the elevator comes down, you can open the door so that the powder that's on the shelf out here can be pushed in. And then when the powder's ready to go up, you close the door and the elevator goes up again. Piece of cake. So, now we are on the shell deck. Each turret has two shell decks, one stacked on top of the other. We're in the lower shell deck right now because that's the one that's restored. Each shell deck, in theory, has duplicate uh, personnel. In practice, it seems like in World War II they had duplicate personnel because you can alternate when you're sending a shell up from one level from the next level, so you've got twice as much time to do it. Uh, in, in practice, by the 1980s, it seems like this is another place where they cut it down. They're like, we just have enough crew for one shell deck at any given time, now, especially for training shoots, practice shoots, things like that. You're only manning the turret with the guys that need to be in there to get the shots loaded that you're calling for at this uh, shoot. There are four sailors on this shell deck who are listed as shellmen, comma, par bucklers. So those are the guys who are roughly where I am. They're throwing the ropes around the capstans and using them to pull the shells. So. Each one of these levels has something like five capstans in it. You've got four par bucklers. You've then got another five guys who are just listed as shellmen, and they're the ones who are actually unbuckling the shells and getting them ready to move. So nine of the guys on this level are in charge of moving the shells from fixed projectile stowage to rotating projectile stowage so that you are keeping this bank of the magazine fully loaded with shells, particularly the kind you need, the armor piercing for fighting battleships or the high capacity for shore bombardment, so you can keep sending this around to the hoists. In this space, you also have a petty officer in charge who's standing roughly where you are with the camera. And from there, you can look to your right and you can see the right shell hoist, or you can look ahead of you and you can see the center and the left shell hoist. By far, the majority of the sailors in this space are back here in the aft end where the hoists are. And then the other sailors are just loosely roaming around out there. So you've got the petty officer in charge. You've got a roving electrician. And he's just here because there's so much electrical stuff. Something goes wrong. You've got somebody already here to start addressing the problem while uh, or your damage control party or your A gang or whoever are, are on the way to address a serious issue. You've got the ring operator who stands where I am and his job is to control the 
uh, rotating ring here. So as we're shooting these shells out, the shellmen and the shellmen parbucklers are moving more shells into this ring, and then I'm moving the ring to bring the type of shell that we need to the hoist. And then you've got a left, right, and center hoist operator. So those are just the guys who are controlling the hoists here from this handle. So each gun has a hoist operator, a shellman parbuckler, and a shellman nearby. They're moving the shells to the hoist. And then you've got one extra parbuckler and two extra shellmen on the other side reloading the ring, working with the, uh, the guy who's rotating the ring, and an electrician and a petty officer. So that brings you to 15 total men on this level. And in theory, you could add a couple more shellmen moving stuff around if you needed to, uh, or subtract a couple if you didn't need them. But remember, this level is 100% duplicated directly above us on the upper shell deck. So that is another at least 15 sailors up there. So at this point, we've already seen the positions of 43 sailors in the turret. And we've seen some room where you could throw other uh, strong backs and weak minds as needed to move shells and powder around. Now we're on the electric deck. There are another four sailors who are up here, bringing our total to 47 so far. These four guys are the three gun layers, left, right, and center, and the train operator. The gun layers are going to move, be moving the barrels up and down. Remember, each barrel can elevate independently, so each one has its own layer. The turret train operator is rotating the turret left to right. The whole turret, all three barrels move together, so there's only one position that does that. So a total of four positions here in the cramped electric deck. Uh, probably my least favorite place to be so far. Give me the manual labor down below. Don't, don't uh, put me in here. So now we're in the gun house itself, which is actually the part you can see up on deck. And I suspect this is what many people are asking about when they ask about the, the crew in one of these turrets. Um, I've always heard it as there are 30 sailors in here. The book lists 27 positions that we'll go through here in a minute. Um, but I should point out that turret one has three fewer positions than turrets two and three. And that's because it no longer has its range finder. And the range finder has three operators. The center seat is the range finder operator. The right hand seat is the trainer. And the left hand seat right here is the pointer. So, these guys can aim the turrets under local control, and it's got its own separate trainer and pointer because, remember, it's pointing at where the target is now. The turret will be rotated slightly past that to point at where the target will be when the shell gets there. And so this, this has to have a little bit of play within the turret, so it's got guys to operate that. And then a single guy who's actually lining it up on the target. Turret 1 lost its rangefinder because that turret is mounted the lowest of all of them and being the furthest forward, as the ship takes water over the bow, a lot of that water was getting into the ends of the rangefinder and then entering the turret through there. Obviously, uh, all the electrical equipment, the hydraulic equipment, and the uh, explosives that are used in turrets, none of it reacts well to salt water. So the Navy just said, eh, get that out of here. It was also a slightly different type than the other two rangefinders. So it also helped simplify the logistics of maintaining these ships, just remove all of this one type, and now we've only got one sort that's still in the inventory. Elsewhere in this part of the gun house, which is known as the turret officer's booth, there are six more sailors for a total of nine. So, uh, Two of those are the turret officer, that's the officer assigned to the turret, and the turret captain. That would be the senior enlisted person in the turret, usually a chief petty officer. Where you are right now looking from the camera is where the, that senior enlisted guy, the turret captain, would have been. 
and he's got his own periscope right there by him so he can see what's happening outside of the turret. Likewise, the turret officer is roughly where I am, and here is my periscope to see what's happening outside. This also allows me to designate the target I want to engage if we're under local control. Right next to the turret officer is the turret officer's talker. He's just a guy with a sound-powered headset that is relaying the turret officer's orders. Then you've got the computer operator who's marking this Mark III rangekeeper, and there is a talker right here with him and a computer operator talker. So I suspect one of these guys is probably um, on a circuit with other computer operators so that they're all on the same one. One of them might be on a circuit with outside stuff getting new uh, input, adjust your shot by X amount. Uh, and even if not, you at least have some redundancy built into the system. So the turret officer's booth, which is probably one of the larger areas in the entire turret, has far less people than you would think, with only nine total. Three of them are all crammed into the center behind the rangefinder, and uh, of the other six, five of them are essentially right here around the switchboard, the uh, periscope, and the computer. So the uh, turret captain standing over where you are is more or less alone and has some room to maneuver and reply to problems. If there's an issue in one of the gun pits, he can pretty easily get there, get a door open, you know, and, and uh, help out as needed, while everybody else around here is pretty much crammed in. I, I'm the guy doing this. I've got another guy over here, another guy behind me. I cannot move from this position easily. Uh, so it is interesting that given all the space in here, everybody's crammed into relatively confined areas, and there's large areas that are more or less open. The next position is called the powder hoist operator. There are three of these positions, left, right, and center, like we've seen duplicated so many times. I am currently in the left powder hoist operator's booth. I'm lifting the powder to the left gun barrel. I'm doing two things in here. Uh, one, I'm operating the hoist to actually bring the powder up from down below, and two, I've got the uh, door here for when the powder elevator gets up, and at that point it's right here in my face. When that comes up, I can open the door so it can be passed out to the uh, actual handling room. All right, so now we are actually in one of the gun pits and I found where some of those missing sailors are. There would be four people in the gun pits. The book only lists three because it's not listing the guy who's all the way down in the bottom. It's only listing the folks who are on this level. So that level down in the bottom, the, the very bottom, the gun pocket, uh, is not listed on any of these pages. So that takes us from 74 to 77 uh, total listed uh, jobs here. So, the four guys that are in here, you've got the guy at the bottom who's the primer man. He's the one who's actually putting the primer into the breech of the gun that will set it off. And then you've got a gun captain. Remember, we, we've got a turret captain who's over the whole gun. The gun captain is just in charge of this barrel. He's the one who's going to step onto the platform drop the breech, inspect the inside, and then give the orders for the powder to come out or whatever else. You've got a cradle operator. He's the guy who's uh, breaking down the cradle and then lifting it back up, and he's uh, the one who's helping the gun captain move the powder around. And then you've got the rammer operator, and he's actually got a seat, if you can call that shelf a seat, and, and he's the one who's operating the rammer to push the shell in, pull it back out, the rammer, not the shell, uh, push the powder in, retract the rammer again. So uh, those are the four positions that are actually here inside of the gun pit. And that leaves us with just six more positions. And again, um, these positions are each duplicated twice. There's a left and a right. And I suspect, because they're doing the same job, that it's just one side is normally in charge, and then if something happens, you've got the other side also available.
So these are some of the least armored parts of the turret. All right, so our final six positions are two each, left and right, uh, site setter, site pointer, and site trainer. And these three guys are in this space on these uh, periscopes here that are looking out the size of the gun. Each periscope cover is about three inches thick, individually cast, uh, so it is significantly less well armored than the rest of the turret around it. It's comparatively easy to shoot one of these off, which I ex uh, suspect is why it's duplicated on each side. And then it might also just be, we've got the room. The, the turrets are relatively symmetrical in shape, so you know, we, we got something over there. We've got the room to put it over here too, so we might as well. And this might be another place where in the 80s, when they're operating with reduced crews, that, uh, hey, we don't need to operate both at one time. Um, so those are your various positions that are listed in the manual and a real high level simplified what they do. I suspect that these positions are identical between all the American fast battleships, whether it's the South Dakotas, the North Carolinas, or the Iowas. So even though the turrets are a little bit bigger on the Iowas, um, you're doing the exact same functions. Let me know what position you think you would be qualified to man or you would like to man. Um, I don't like a lot of these tight spaces. It's one thing to crawl into them when we're shooting these videos. It's another thing entirely to be stuck there when people are shooting at you. It's kind of difficult to extricate yourself from some of these positions. Uh, so I think my favorite one would be powder handling. You don't need a gym membership if you're doing that. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.